South Africa's COVID-19 vaccination drive well underway with phase two successfully inoculating just over 167,000 people by Saturday. About 480,000 healthcare workers have received their jabs under the Sisonke Johnson & Johnson program. This week, we'll see the start of the vaccine rollout by the private sector with the Mediclinic Hospital Group beginning vaccinations in at least nine of its hospitals nationwide. The vaccine rollout is being managed through the Department of Health's electronic vaccination data system. The private sector had previously said that it had the capacity to vaccinate 163,000 people per day. For more on the private sector's role in the country's mass inoculation drive, let's bring in Dr. Stavros Nikola, who's chair of Business for South Africa's Health Work Group. Uh, and Dr. Stravla, it's great to see you. Uh, Nikola, big pardon. It's great to see you once again. Thanks for making time for us. I, I wonder whether you're able to tell us who the players are exactly in the private sector who are set to ramp up the inoculation drive, so to speak, from this week. Yanda, yeah, firstly, uh, good morning uh, to you and all the viewers. And thanks again for having me on your, on your program. Uh, as you indicated, uh, Last week, the first week of the phase two rollout, we, we, we vaccinated uh, just over 165,000 South Africans. And of course, you also indicated that we need to ramp up, certainly across both the private and the public sector, to around 250,000 vaccinations a day in order to meet our target of vaccinating 40 million uh, citizens by early quarter one next year, that's 2022. Uh, to answer your question directly, um, the private sector has a number of players that are involved in the rollout. Some of them have already commenced their vaccination programs. Others will be scaling up and there will also be new private sector partners that will be coming in in the, in the next few days or weeks that lie ahead. Uh, to mention some of these, uh, we have the, firstly the, the corporate pharmacy groups, which include the likes of Diskin, Clicks, uh, ShopRite, and, and others. Uh, we then have the hospital groups, and the hospital groups will do this on a phased basis, understanding that they also need to manage in parallel an escalating pandemic. So they need to find the balance between vaccinating on the one hand and then treating patients that are admitted for COVID and other conditions. Those include your traditional hospital groups as well as some of the smaller hospital groups. And then you also have uh, your medical schemes, uh, the likes of Discovery, um, Med Scheme, Afrocentric and Momentum. They are putting up what we call va mass vaccination sites. And then you have your independent pharmacy groups and your general practitioners and eventually your occupational health centers who all come on stream at various times. And the estimate, as you put it, is the private sector of that total 250,000 that's required to be vaccinated daily will scale up to the estimate around 160,000. Right, day. right. And l let's speak a bit more about that capacity. I mean, I is there room for that possibly to be expanded if it is found that the private sector can actually go in that direction? In other words, what I'm trying to get around to is if there's an instance where a site that happens to be in the private sector is finding that it's able to get through all its doses and still has time, is there as part of the agreement, room for government to allow that uh, site more responsibility because it essentially has more capacity? Uh, is, there, is there kind of that flexibility from the arrangement that's currently in place? So I think, uh, Ayanda, we, we, we can't... Uh, firstly, let me just say that the private sector is working extremely closely with the public sector. We have virtually daily meetings. Uh, and certainly, in my experience, the collaboration between the two sectors. Um, government is, of course, leading the program, as it should, and the private sector is supporting and complementing the lead. Um, so in my time, it's unprecedented to see this level of collaboration. I think our first initial focus is, is to scale up, uh, optimize what each site can deliver, but also to expand the capacity 
um, bring on new new sites. There's a fair amount of regulatory and uh, and accreditation procedures that need to be managed here, and that is where the focus is in these initial phase phases. Certainly, if we find that there is additional capacity in sites, I mean, we will look at speaking to government to see how we best optimise that. But at the end of the day, I think what we're trying to get to here is, in the private sector, meet that target of around 160,000 per day at its peak. Right. And what actually goes into deciding which of the sites in the private sector will go online? Uh, you mentioned some kind of accreditation process, which I imagine in some instances could be the kind of red tape that's not necessarily convenient uh, in a context where we're trying to get this up and running as quick as we can. Uh, look, look any, first of all, any site that meets the regulatory and quality standards set out uh, by the pharmacy council and other medical statutory bodies is eligible to participate in this program. And uh, so there's no exclusion. And I think many will, many have already applied and we expect the applications to scale up in the days and weeks ahead. So the requirement here, understandably so, because you, you're de dealing with uh, you're dealing with uh, medical equipment, you're dealing with vaccines. These all require medical expertise and the appropriate quality standards to be met. So that is uh, the only requirement here is that a facility that undertakes vaccinations meets the, for example, the South African Pharmacy Council requirements. There's an accreditation process and there's a permit that's required. It's called the Section 22 permit. That permit is required in order to accredit the facility. And then, of course, the personnel, the actual vaccinators that administer the vaccine have to be trained and registered personnel. So these are general practitioners, specialists, pharmacists and nurses. These are all people that uh, have the necessary medical expertise, but also are registered with the statutory body because there are medical legal aspects here that need to be fulfilled as well. It cannot be anyone that just vaccinates. These are people with the appropriate medical expertise. Right. Help us understand where medical aids fit in that value chain. Um, we've kind of heard of, you know, the fact that you have a medical aid counts for something. For people who are still trying to connect those dots, help us understand what that something is. So look, firstly, we, ha we have uh, around 9 million South Africans that are uh, beneficiaries of medical schemes. Um, so th those 9 million include your main member and your beneficiaries, as we call it. Um, we estimate to to achieve the herd immunity number that around 7 million of those 9 million would have to be vaccinated. Um, for those 7 million, the medical schemes have agreed, and this has been, again, um, with applicable statutes implemented. The, anyone that belongs to a medical scheme, the cost of the vaccine and the administration of the vaccine will be completely funded. So there will be no cost to a medical scheme member. So I think that's the first advantage of belonging to a scheme. Secondly, some of the schemes, as I indicated earlier, have set up vaccination sites for their members. These are what we call mass vaccination sites. So they do between one to 2,000 vaccinations a day. And uh, the schemes have set those up. So members of schemes can elect to go to those facilities uh, that these schemes have set up. It doesn't mean that they can't go to other facilities. And I think people are encouraged to go to those facilities that are most convenient and nearby, where they either they work or, or live. So that, those are some of the benefits, but certainly um, to vaccinate 40 million, you need 40 million citizens. You need all hands on deck and you need every facility that is available to be up and running, optimized, and uh, as, as we call it, working at full capacity. Dr. Stavros Nikolaou, thanks very much indeed for your time. Really appreciate your speaking to us. Uh, Dr. Nikolaou is the chair of Business for South Africa's Health Work Group. Once again, thanks very much indeed.